So, you're thinking about becoming a filmmaker, huh? Hi, my name is Brian Coyne and I've directed television commercials for almost 25 years now. <clears throat> I originally intended to make movies, but I got sidetracked along the way and started doing television commercials, which turned out to be awesome. I've traveled all over the world, I've shot in all the major cities in the country, uh, and I made a really good living. I have I tell people I have the best job in the whole world. I'm a director and I love doing what I do. Um, on top of that, I've shot short films, documentaries, corporate films, music videos. But in the end, it's all the same. You're telling stories visually. And basically the big difference is the time constraint. So I have to tell stories in a very short amount of time, but films get a longer time to do it. Now there's a million ways to get into the business. I don't think I can possibly touch on all the ways you can do that. But I can share my experience and talk about some of the stuff I know other people have done uh, to get into the business and how they went about doing it. Personally, I did the film school route. I went to USC School of Cinema and Television, graduated from that program, and I think it's still considered one of the two best in the country. I highly recommend film school, but not for the reasons you might think. Um, Basically, today we're going, to have, we're going to talk about two things. Number one, is this right for you? And number two, how do I get started? Okay, is this right for you? Um, you're the only person that can determine that. And if you have to drive and the fire in your belly, then I suggest just go for it. But there are a few things you should be aware of and traits that you need to have or develop in order to really be successful in this business. The first one is self-discipline and focus. Especially in the beginning, most of this stuff you're going to have to do on your own. Um, people aren't as interested in your education as they are in what have you done. And they want to be able to see your work and they want to be able to know what you're capable of doing. So that means you're going to have to do some projects and you're going to have to be able to show them around. Generally, that means doing it on your own, working for free, getting people together and trying to make things happen. Um, it's fun, but it can be a lot of work. Again, self-discipline and focus. You'll be doing a lot of this on your own, especially in the beginning, and you got to be very, very, very focused. It's hugely competitive out there. Uh, nobody's going to hand this to you. There's a lot of people that want to do it. The good news is there aren't a lot of people willing to put in the work. And so if you're willing to do that and work hard and really practice learning the craft, then uh, you got a really good shot at doing this. The second thing is kind of obviously you want to be creative or have creative interests. Uh, first of those things is writing, 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 writing. It's a way of telling stories. It's a way you can do it on your own. It's a way of communicating, but it's an excellent way to develop creative skills. And that's something you can do on your own and you can practice and you can get better at. Uh, visual skills. I, I come from uh, sort of an artistic background. I like drawing and painting and I did all that. And I line, form, composition, all those things are things you have to develop and having an interest in those things is very, very helpful. If you have that kind of a background, it's extremely helpful. Uh, not necessary, but it's all stuff you can learn. But creative interests and, create, and some creative talent is very, very helpful. The third thing, you gotta be good with people. Um, this is a completely collaborative business. You're going to be working with crews, with studios, with clients, uh, the art department, wardrobe, editors. I mean, you are working with a lot of people all the time. You're constantly in front of a group of people who are all looking to you for guidance. And so there's a thing about people skills that you have to develop. The screaming, crazy artist kind of guy that a lot of people like to talk about. It's not that common in the business. People like to work with people who know what they're doing, who are calm, and who know how to work with people. So it's a really important thing is to have very good people skills. 
You got to learn how to pitch in front of a group, and we'll talk about that later. But you'll, you will be pitching and selling your creative vision in front of people uh, more often than you think. So, once again, good people skills is really important. Uh, number four, which is a weird one, but I'm telling you, it's a, it's it's a serious one. You have to be good at taking criticism. People will always judge your work. They're always going to be looking at your work and you're constantly going to be showing your work and everybody's got an opinion. So it starts in film school. One of the main things we did is we went out and make a film, show it to the class and everybody comments on it. And that's can be kind of brutal sometimes. So you got to get used to that. After that, it's going to be studios, TV producers, clients, ad agencies. Everybody is going to have an opinion and everybody's going to want to tell you how to do it. So you have to get really good at, take, at taking criticism. The other important thing about criticism is it's the best way to learn. Now, you don't have to take everybody's opinion like it's gospel. You have to learn how to sort out the ones that work that don't. But if you're listening, if you care about what people say, then you can get better and better because this is a medium that depends on the audience and feedback is intensely important. So you need to be able to get out there and be willing to learn and accept criticism. Uh, next thing we talk about is how do I get started? So how do I get started? I'm going to suggest film school as the number one way to go. Um, and it's not necessarily what you might think. Film school is awesome because it's a place where you get to make all your mistakes. Film is a language. It's different than plays. It's different than writing novels. It's, it's its own unique way of telling stories. And film has a visual language. And it's a place where you can go to learn that language. <clears throat> Most importantly, it's where you make mistakes. You get to practice, 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 and make mistakes not on somebody else's dime, okay? In the real world, when I'm out there <clears throat> on a set, we're spending somewhere between ten dollars and $20,000 an hour. And that's no place to be trying things or getting super creative or just guessing that something might come together. Um, you want a place where you can go make all the mistakes you need to make. You think the films you make in film school are really important and you find out really it's just a train wreck, but you've got that under your belt and you know what not to do. Watching other people make mistakes is an awesome way to learn. Okay, I know I don't need to do that. That's a great one. In film school, you'll get some good technical training, which is helpful. Uh, you get the same thing on YouTube if you spent the time to do it. The professors generally aren't that great and nobody can really help you learn to tell a good story. That's something you have to develop and it can develop. It's a craft and you have to be able to learn that craft. Another awesome thing about film school is that you're with a bunch of other people who are doing the exact same thing at the exact same time. I had a group of people that I went through with and we ate, slept, drank and ate film. I mean, we, if we weren't making films and helping each other do that, we were out watching movies, and if we weren't watching movies, we were going out afterwards and talking about them. It's an awesome, immersive experience where you're with people of a like mind, and you're learning just by being around other people who are doing it. So I don't think that there's anything about film school that professors are going to give you any brilliant wisdom or turn you into a great filmmaker. But being able to make mistakes and being with people of like mind doing the same thing is really important, and it's also just a, an awful lot of fun. Another way, everybody hates hearing this, write, 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 write. Um, you want to write scripts and you want to practice writing scripts. And you write through all of your blockage and you just keep going and just keep making them. If they're bad, it's okay. Just move on to the next one. It's an incredibly good learning experience. You learn about character, you learn about story structure, you learn about arcs, and it's really important to just write as much as you can. A good way to get into directing movies, <clears throat> in a way a lot of guys are doing it now, is a 
the guy will write a script. And when he sells the script, he says, you attach me as a director. And so a lot of first time directors are getting out there because they wrote scripts. So it's a good way in if you're thinking about trying to make movies. Um, writing is key. Also, you want to just develop really good communication skills. Like I said before, you're talking to crew, grip, the art department, location scouts, wardrobe, agency and client, studio guys, the producers, and you're doing it all in emails and you're doing a lot of written communications. And what you want to do is be organized and you want to be an effective communicator. So writing always helps no matter what in every aspect of this business. Third thing, make movies. Um, I'm so jealous of you guys. When I first started, we had Super 8 movies that were actual film, or we had half inch VHS cameras where you had to rent the equipment to be able to do the editing and it was expensive and clunky and hard to do. Everybody today has a movie studio in your pocket. Um, you can go out tomorrow and start making little short films. It doesn't have to amount to anything, but practice, practice, practice. And you'll find out uh, it's, it's a lot of fun. I would suggest the first things you do is make some short movies with no dialogue. We did our first year in film school and we couldn't use dialogue anywhere. Dialogue is the death of the beginning filmmaker. Um, plays and movies are two different mediums. Plays are about talking. There are people on a, on a stage talking for two hours. In movies, it's a completely different thing. Movies are about moving an audience through space and time. Cutting between two angles. You're moving, every time you move the camera, you're moving the audience. And you have to understand that you're constantly moving the audience through space and time. You're directing them to what you want them to see. It is a visual medium and like I said, it's a language unto itself and you have to learn how that language works. It's a craft as well as it is an art. And the best way to learn is just to do it. There's no excuse anymore because everybody's got a camera in their pocket and it's easy as one, two, three. I mean, just get out there and start cutting some things together. Okay, number four is, strangely, you've got to develop pitching skills. And that's standing up in front of people in a group and being able to explain your idea or your creative vision in a short, concise way that's interesting enough for them to buy it. And you'd be surprised at how much of that goes on in the business. Um, commercials, movies, TVs, even when you're not the writer, uh, you have to pitch your idea. So in a movie, they're talking to different directors. How is he going to handle the film? What's his vision for the film? How is he going to do this different than Joe Schmo or Sally Mae down the road? You have to be able to very concisely communicate your vision, which is <clears throat> pitching your ideas for a film, TV show, commercial, whatever you're whatever you're doing. This is a very important skill because it's about marketing, it's about selling yourself, and it's about selling your ideas. They have something called the elevator pitch. I'm sure you guys have heard of it. It's a 30 to 40 second long pitch that you can give to a studio executive while you're riding to the 20th floor in an elevator. And that means you have to be short, concise, to the point, and make it interesting enough to get this guy's attention. And that's how you gotta sell your ideas. <clears throat> short, concise, to the point. Um, you're really talking about your unique vision. What's your take on this? So um, commercials, movies, and TV, if you're a director, you're not the writer most of the time, but you still have to pitch your ideas. How I got my jobs was I have to go up in front of the agency guys in a group of people and explain to them how I would approach their commercial, what I would do with the images and how I would approach what they're doing. And they're talking to four other, five other guys who are pitching the same stuff. So you have to have a unique vision, a creative vision, and you have to be able to communicate that idea in a short, concise way. Um, number five, another weird one. While you're doing all this and learning and practicing and getting out there doing, 
Uh, learn a trade. Get good at something. There's a lot of jobs in this business. Um, editing, camera, art direction, props, costume design, wardrobe, makeup and hair. It's so much easier to get into the business that way and to network and get to know people. I mean, even as a grip, you're going to know the producer. And he's a guy you can give a script to. So being in the business and being able to network, it, it's... It, it's, it's amazingly helpful. It's hard to be in, count, in accounting and do films on the side or on the weekends. It's better to be in the business and to be networking. And there's tons of jobs in the film industry. A lot of guys that I went to film school with came out of school and said, no, I'm not gonna, I'm a director, I'm not an editor, or I'm not a cameraman. Uh, and they ended up working at used car lots and uh, in legal offices. So. It's something that can give you a way to make money while you're practicing your craft and a way to be able to network and a way to be involved in the filmmaking business while trying to get to where you're going. That's basically it. That's my advice. And uh, I would say if you got the fire in your belly and you're ready to do this, go out and knock yourself out. It's I, I still tell people that this is the funnest job in the whole world. I've had, it, it, it's absolutely wonderful. It's great to do and it's a, it's a great way to make money. Be prepared to do a lot of work, but you can do this too. So thanks and good luck. <laughs>